The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. What's up, besties? Welcome to episode 14 of Child Like It Best with Mike Valdez. And let me tell you something, brother. I am the second part of that title. Before we get the show rolling, I wanted to let you know that I will be at a couple of shows coming up. On September 3rd, I will be at Time Splitters, which is a comedy show at Bar Nancy in Miami. It's hosted by Abe Perez and Mateo Rodriguez. It's going to be a great show. So many great comics on the lineup. It's a free show, so make sure that you come by. It's going to be Tuesday, September 3rd at 8.30. Also, that Saturday, September 7th, I'm going to be at the Bangin' Banjo Comedy Show in Pompano Beach. That is going to be a really fun show. That's also a great lineup of comedians. Free show as well. Wow, so many free shows. How's he making any money? I'm not. But I will say this. It would be absolutely great if you could make it and give me some of those laughs, because laughing is free. This week, my guest is Dash Maverick. Dash is an improviser, he's with the Society Circus Players, and he's also a pro wrestler. We chat about childhood as well as his life as a pro wrestler and an improviser. I really think you guys are going to enjoy this. So without further ado, please enjoy my friend, Dash Maverick. So, hey everybody. This is Child Like It Best with Mike Valdez. Hey guys, guess what? I'm Mike Valdez, and today I have a very special guest with me, Dash Maverick. What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on, Mike? How you been, man? I'm doing so good. Thank you so much for having me on this. Yeah, dude, absolutely. This is great. Before I start with my first question, because I have so many questions just based on your name alone, but before I start with my first question, we here at Child Like It Best, we like to start with a Flintstones vitamin. Awesome. So... There you go. All you right, can let go. the audience know what it is that you this have. This is fantastic. This is, uh, <laughs> Flintstones complete vitamins. Of, they're the gummies, which is great. They're not the chalky ones. Yeah. Because I hated those. Okay, so I pulled out an orange. I was really hoping for an orange one. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I got pebbles. Okay. That's a very common theme mm-hmm. in this show. So as you're taking that in, can mm-hmm. you please tell me about where you grew up? So I grew up in um, Union City, New Jersey. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not from Florida originally. I'm from Union City, New Jersey. Born and raised there until I was about 15 years old. It's actually, uh, Union City is the, uh, number one, it's the most densely populated city in America. Yeah. So very proud of that. And number two, it is the highest concentration of Cubans. No way. Outside of Miami. Holy yeah. cow. Because we you, people kind of come to my the Cubans, they kind of come to Miami and then they spread out all over the country. Yeah. But in Union City, there's a large concentration, not as big as here in Miami, mind right. you. But just outside of Miami, that's the biggest concentration. Yeah, just like Cubans that swam too much. Yeah, and yeah. then they just landed in Jersey. They, they just went too far. <laughs> Somebody, t- they just kept swimming. You know, they was like, "Oh, it's ninety miles to Florida," and then it's like five days later, like, "Where am I?" It's, oh, look, the Statue of Liberty. Go left. Go left. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, hilarious. And they ended up in Union City, New Jersey. <laughs> that, that's really awesome. And so, like, I, being from Union City, I would assume that you would be a Kevin Smith fan. Right? I am. I am a very, but I didn't discover him until like way later. Well, yeah, right, usually I, a know, lot I'm of college kid, people. You're not really, yeah. So I, yeah. I didn't discover him until it was after Jane's Silent Bob, the movie came out. Right. And then uh, somebody told me like, oh yeah, this is Kevin Smith. He's done a bunch of good movies or whatever. And somebody lent me a copy of Clerks. Yeah. And I watched that and I said, oh my God, this movie's amazing. Yeah. Right? And did you recognize anything from there? Or is Red Bank anywhere near where you were from? Uh, no, no. Red Bank is towards like the southern middle part of New Jersey. Okay. And, and Union City is more towards the north. Like I could see from my apartment, we could see across the the uh, the Hudson to New York. So like I could see like the World Trade Center and I could see like That's awesome. the New York skyline. Whereas like where a uh, red hook is towards like the middle bottom down there. Right. That's awesome. So when you were at school, what kind of kid would you say that you were? Who did you sit with at lunch? Oh, wow. No one. Uh, no, I was a total, <laughs> I was an absolute loner in uh which is why I'm funny now. Uh, I think so too. Yeah, Cause I was, I was relatively similar. Yeah, no, yeah. I was like, I've always been, I wouldn't, I don't want to say antisocial. Sure. I wanted to be social. Yeah. I just wasn't. Right? You're an like, introverted extrovert. I was an introverted extrovert. You know, I want to be social. I want to be liked. I want 
uh, to be friends with people, but at the same time, don't come near me. It's kind of like a cat, right? Where a cat like shows you his belly and is like, pet me, pet me. No, don't touch me, but pet right. me. Exactly. Right? I'm, so I'm kind of like that. Like, I want to be friends. I want to have friends. I want to have people to talk to. I don't want to be around a lot of them, you know? Yeah. So it's, it was just kind of like that. And also, like, I don't know, I was chubby. I had glasses, you know? You know nothing about that. No, I know uh, nothing about that. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so it was... Uh, I was bullied a lot, you know, like girls didn't really dig me that much. So it's like I, I sort of didn't fit in anywhere. So I, I was just that kid who was like sitting. I didn't eat glue or anything. <laughs> I wasn't. Right. I wasn't that child. But, yeah. But I would definitely like. I'd rather like sit and read a book during recess than like play with my friends. Sure. I, I would assume that sometime during high school you found drama club or something right. that made you realize like, oh, this is the thing that's going to help me like yeah. become a person. Right. <laughs> like, and, and I, th- I think um, anybody who is in the comedy business really sure. much has the same story, right? Right, like, right? right. I was awkward. I was weird. And then they found that, oh, I can make people laugh. Yeah. Right. And then like, okay, no, so now I'm controlling this. Like they're not laughing at me. They're laughing with me. Right. So it was sort of like that. And I, I found that I had some sort of a, like I, I sort of touched on it, but didn't really pursue it per se. My parents were big on the whole, like, yeah, be an accountant or be a doctor or sure. be a, one of these things. Like that's not going to, you know, the other stuff is going to make you any money and that's all they really, you know, but I knew that like entertaining was my thing. And it was, it was really when I discovered pro wrestling, right? Like that's when everything changed because that's when i knew like i like performing in front of people you know uh i like putting shows together you know i did the backyard thing which i don't recommend for anybody to do just a cyo (laughs) you know cyoa moment um don't don't do backyard wrestling kids it's not good get trained professionally uh if you like wrestling but uh you know i did the backyard wrestling stuff for a little bit and and that's kind of when i really realized i like performing i like being in front of the camera i like talking on a microphone how old were you when you got into wrestling? God, I want to say I was 11 or 12. Okay. It, it, it all kind of started. I can tell you which Royal Rumble it was. I assume uh, it's still WWF. It was WWF at the time. It was just at the beginning of the Attitude Era. Right. Um, I, it had to have been Royal Rumble 94 or Is this pre like or that. post uh, Steve Austin? This was th- this was th- when Steve Austin became the thing. Because that dude like changed wrestling. Yeah. Oh, he did. He did. He absolutely. Yeah. It was right as Sean was leaving mm-hmm. and Austin was coming in to take the place. Right. Like, I think it was uh, my so my upstairs neighbor came down. I was like, oh, let's hang out. You know, we were about the same age, and he was like, oh, I, I want to watch wrestling. And I'm like, All right, come downstairs and we'll watch wrestling. But we'll hang out. So we're watching wrestling. And uh, that's, you know, I saw Shawn Michaels and Sid Vicious and Stone Cold Steve Austin was there. And and that's when I was like, oh, wrestling is pretty cool. Yep. Right. So it had to have been like 90. Yeah, it was like 11 or 12. It was it had to be like 94, 93. Yeah. Something like, that. like right as Shawn was on his way out. Right. It's funny because I, I remember being a huge wrestling fan, but I was younger. And then once I got to a certain age, it almost like. I almost became too old for it. Yeah. But yeah, then I, I but then I developed a new love for it where I was like, because I guess I equated a lot to, to like Santa Claus. Because sure. like when you're a kid, you're like, oh, this is real. And right. then you find out it's fake and you're like, screw this. This right. is fake. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you become an adult and you're like, yeah, but what they're doing is like kind of awesome, you know? Yeah. Because, like, yeah, they're acting and the storylines are fake, but those are real hits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those are real. They're actually jumping off of ladders. They can't fake that. Right. There's you, no, know? you can't fake falling off of a ladder. I tried. You yeah. can't. You cannot fake falling off of a ladder. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that. I have so many questions about oh, this. Oh, I, I, I talk about that for hours. Man, I was a huge wrestling fan when I was a kid. So, like, I loved the WWF era. So, I actually remember the biggest thing because like we grew up pretty poor and my mom was a single mom at the time and she sprung to get me wrestlemania and it was the wrestlemania where it was uh hulk hogan versus the undertaker oh wow it was like this amazing that was huge yeah yeah i don't remember a thing from it you know from like my actual memory i remember it now because i've seen it on (laughs) youtube but (laughs) but i i didn't remember anything before youtube but I just remember they used to have these huge, like, 
almost life-size pillows called Wrestling Buddies by yes. Tonka. Do you yes. remember these? Yes, I remember the Wrestling Buddies. And I, I would, never had one, but I remember Man, them. I would beat the living piss out of those <laughs> things. <laughs> like, at those, like, that and Rocky movies got me so amped. Yeah. Like, you know, especially because of the soundtrack in the Rocky oh, movies. Oh, the Rocky movies are fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, like, I, I actually just watched them. Did you? I just, re- I look, at once a year there are certain series of movies yes. that I will just rewatch. Yeah. Rocky is one of those I probably watch twice a year. You know, Back to the Future's in there, Die Hard, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Uh, you know, all those series. But Rocky's got to be one of my favorite movie series of It's all so good. And, and, it, and yeah. even though part four is basically a glorified music video, it's yeah. so good. It is. It's, it is. And it's basically a metaphor for America versus Russia. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's still as relevant today as it was <laughs> yeah. back in the 80s. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. So before we talk about, like, wrestling and all that sure. stuff, because I know that you do all that professionally. Right. Other than wrestling, what were the things that – you became a fan of like what were your fandoms oh wow i like a lot of stuff there was do you remember the silver hawks no i don't know you don't remember remind me so the silver hawks it was like a space cartoon it was kind of in the same vein as thundercats and all that stuff you know i was a fan of thundercats i was a fan of the gi joes and all that stuff but there was a series called silver hawks and another one called the centurions Mm -hmm. right they were all made to sell toys let's not kid ourselves (laughs) yeah that's all they were they were meant to sell toys but the silver hawks were like it took place in space and they had this like giant spaceship and they were going tons of adventures and i think their main villain was called monstar of course right (laughs) that sounds about right like missing an eye and he would like change his head or whatever um (laughs) so weird must have been a cool toy. Yeah. Where he oh, changes it was a, his head. Yeah, but... you'd like squeeze his legs and his head would flip off that's and change. That's such a 90s it's an, toy. Oh, that's such a 90s toy. It really was. <laughs> the really flipping was. heads. Oh, yeah. And like put it in the freezer in the mask And then like change colors, yeah. <laughs> like with the, with the Ghostbusters What a outfits. 90s toy. Oh, my God. Uh, the Silverhawks, like you would like press like a little button in their back and their arms yeah. would come up and they'd have like wings, right? That's what they were. They, they were like, like just like Thundercats. They were yeah. normal at, at a point and they'd be like... Silver Hawks, and then they'd like change into these giant metal outfits. Not That's giant, awesome. like skin type metal outfits. And they'd have wings, they would fly around in space, and there was like a cowboy space pilot. That's really Dude, cool. Dude, if you ever get a chance, check on YouTube for Silver Hawks. <laughs> that sounds it's very interesting. so trippy, man. But that was, I don't know, that's one of my fondest cartoon memories from when I was a kid. It's funny because, like, and we've talked about this with plenty of guests on this show, yeah. but you remember things as an adult, like, you look back in, like, your kid eyes. Yeah. And you're like, man, that show was great. And then you, <laughs> and then you watch it on YouTube and you're just like, this show sucks. This was terrible. Like, <laughs> like and then especially, like, the Disney afternoon shows, like, yeah. It was basically it was just the theme song that was good, yeah. you know. Like it wasn't really anything else. Uh, challenge, I got it. No, the Disney After News. Like I have them on DVD. Yeah, and I feel like I could watch a lot of those now, and they'd still be kind of good. Like Darkwing Duck, I could still watch. That definitely religiously. holds up. Darkwing Duck holds up. I think Ducktales holds up uh, mm. a lot. The ones to me that don't hold up are like, and and I'm about to commit blasphemy because I'm a huge fan, but Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Right. Like, I tried to watch the original Ninja Turtle series, and after about season one and a half, yeah, right? It becomes It just becomes a commercial, right? Mm-hmm. It's just because, like, Mutant of the Week, it's just another toy that they can release. Oh, here's another hero that falls into the mutagen. It's just another line of the mute animals, right? Like it's That all I definitely just, agree with. You know, it just became a commercial, and I'm watching it. I'm just like, uh, I'm kind of done, right? Yeah. The later Ninja Turtle series were also pretty good. The 2006 one, the 2012 one, they sure. actually were pretty good. Yeah. The last one on Nickelodeon was fantastic. Yeah, when Nickelodeon took over, it started getting really good. Yeah. But the original ones, yeah, you're absolutely right. And because it, it actually came up before I was even born. Yeah. So, like, at one point, I, I believe iTunes had, like, for 30 bucks, you can get all the seasons. Wow. And then you slowly start to realize why they sold it for so cheap. Because you're just like, oh, because this isn't a good show. Right. You it's know? not. <laughs> it's not because it was just, you know, and then there was other ones that were like that, too. right? Like, Transformers became a, a Oh, yeah. Every, every day there would be a new car or a new villain or whatever just to sell the toys. But DuckTales and Darkwing Duck and, and some of those Disney Afternoon ones... Bonkers the Bobcat, remember that I one? I loved Bonkers. I loved Bonkers. That was a good one. Uh, Tailspin, like, sure, they sold toys, but yeah. it didn't feel like the show was to sell you the toy. Sure. Like, the show itself had story, it had heart, it had some sort of 
you know, I mean, they were all cliche storylines. Let's yeah. we've watched the same storyline a hundred times. Absolutely. But it but it had a reasoning to it that wasn't like, here's a new character so we can sell a toy. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about Alvin and the Chipmunks as well. Oh, I love Alvin. Where it was like a lot of the episodes were very similar. Yeah. Like it was like they're gonna sing, Alvin's gonna do something, and Dave's gonna get pissed. Yeah. Like right. that's pretty much every episode. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But and then you know, after season three, the chip bets come by and yeah, they're like, wait yeah. a minute, we're men now. <laughs> like, we're men, chipmunks. Yep. But yeah, it did have a lot of heart to it right. at the same time. At least more than those, like, weird movies that they made where they yeah. started doing, like, Black Eyed Peas covers. Did you yeah. remember the original chipmunks movie? The one where yeah. they had to, like, travel around the world? Yeah, because we're the boys of the rock and yeah. roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god, that movie. And I, then the Chip Betts would go, because we're the girls of rock and, rock and roll. roll. Oh, oh, it was god. so clever. It was so it was. clever. It they would so change great. boys to girls. It and was there was amazing. Like a, there was like a, like a, <laughs> like they were the two villains who were like, oh, we'll pay you money to tra- travel around the world and pick up these do-. And they were actually like moving diamonds but illegally. It, but I'm pretty, I'm almost 100% sure that that is the plot of the first live action Alvin and the Chipmunks. Was it really? Yeah, they stole from that well they didn't steal from it but they like took sure the ideas from the original Alvin and the Chipmunks movie and with obvious reasoning because that storyline is very good yeah it actually was pretty it actually works you know what about movies and stuff you talked a little bit about franchises that you're still into you know but well okay so I grew up in a time in uh, because it was in New Jersey we had a channel called um WPIX New York. It was like Channel 11 of there yeah. or something. It's a channel that eventually became the CW. Okay. And before they started doing those like primetime TV shows, what they would show on that channel was old movies from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Okay. So they'd always take a movie and edit it for time and edit it for violence and stuff, uh, which has a funny story in and of itself. Sure. But they like every week they would do like a theme. Right. So uh, it would be like Charles Bronson week and they'd show like all the Charles Bronson movies yeah. or, you know, they'd have like edited uh, Charles Bronson, edited Charles Bronson movies, you know, like, or they'd have the uh, like Clint Eastwood week and they'd show all the Clint Eastwood movies <laughs> or like time travel and they'd show all the Back to the Futures and Bill and Ted. That's right? literally that just to cut you off. That literally is like. Today we're having Quentin Tarantino week, but we're editing it for time and also for violence and no. for drug use and for language. It's a three minute movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. But that's, yeah, that's basically what it was. So I grew up with those movies and it, because it had, they had the like theme thing. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, so it's Rocky week. So they'd show Rocky one through five. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I fell in love, not just with movies, but I would fall in love with the franchises. Yeah. You know? Uh, so I'd fall in love with like Star Wars and then they'd show like two other movies because uh, at the time there were only three Star Wars movies. Yeah. I mean, to many people, there's still only there's still only three. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, like so I fell in love with a lot of those. So, like Star Wars and Indiana um, Jones. I'm sure Indiana Jones was another huge one for me. Uh, I used to like um, my, my mom used to hang up close because we had a so we grew up poor as well. Yeah. Um, and at one point we were able to finally get a washer in the house. Mm hmm. Um, but there was no room or money for a dryer. So we had the washer, but no dryer. So we would wash the clothes, but then my mom would hang clothes on clotheslines all around the house. So whenever clothes weren't drying, I would take the clothesline and I'd pretend it was like the Indiana Jones whip. Oh yeah. That's awesome. I'd use like one of my dad's old hats or whatever. And I'd pretend I was Indiana Jones or man. uh, That's so funny. Yeah. Did you ever get to a point when you were a kid, like right after you saw Batman and Robin, and you're like, don't worry, mom, after you wash those clothes, I'll karate the water out of those clothes. <laughs> that was horrible. That like, was that's, absolutely terrible. Luckily, I was older. I was a little bit older when, when uh, which movie was that? Was it that was Batman, Batman and, and Robin. Robin. No, it wasn't Batman Forever, wasn't was it? He, I don't remember. One well, of those. For yeah. the listener, it's a scene in Batman and Robin or Batman Forever yeah. where Dick Grayson literally does laundry by doing karate yeah, and like, like punches uh, the water out of his own shirts and things like that. It is so stupid. It, it was just an excuse to get Chris O'Donnell to like run around in a tank top doing laundry. Like yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
women are gonna like that he's doing laundry anyway. Yeah, <laughs> like you right, don't have to right. do karate. Yeah, he's doing. You know, it's it's the <laughs> it's the nineties. He's got an earring. He's in shape. So you know, something about me. I don't know if you know this, but I grew up in a very conservative Christian home, same. so I wasn't yeah. allowed to watch a lot of things. You grew up in the same? Yeah, my parents were very. My, or they still are very conservative. My mom less so than my dad. So my question for you is: Did you ever have to sneak anything past your parents? Oh my God, yes. So. I grew up in a household because this was back before, you know, back when the American dream was still a thing that was possible (laughs) Yeah, and not anymore. But uh, my dad used to work uh, one and a half jobs. Right. And my Mm -hmm. mom would stay at home with me and my brother. So I had a lot of time with the TV to myself and I would watch things like uh, like Beverly Hills Cop Mm -hmm. and um, oh, what were some of the movies like uh, the James Bond movies like. Now, I know those like the James Bond movies weren't like hard R. I can't even remember any R-rated movies right now. No, but there of were tons not. of R-rated movies that came out when I was a kid. What's funny to me is that you're saying all these things, and like it makes so much sense because I, when I was a kid, I couldn't watch James Bond because of the girls that were oh, sexual. The, yeah, the yeah. Bond girls. Like I couldn't do anything because yeah. like because yeah, there's no nudity, but there's like the idea of lust is sure. in that movie, yeah. you know. So you just can't watch things like that like i couldn't watch which i thank my parents now but i couldn't watch wild wild west because of all the like gratuitous like sex scenes in the beginning of the movie yeah i mean i thank them now because that movie was awful but yeah (laughs) yeah, (laughs) but wow but yeah like there's the opening scene is literally will smith full on there's just doinking a woman on a water tower like right yes oh my god i forgot about that opening that movie is a very horny movie it is a very yeah (laughs) like and, and, and you have um uh, oh, what's his name in drag? Um, Kevin Klein. Yeah, Kevin Klein. Yeah, Larry one of the world's greatest while. actors in drag. It's so weird. <laughs> like <laughs> sometimes it works. So remember to Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Yeah, one of the greatest movies ever made, and they put Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo in drag. Yeah, like that was fantastic. There's, there's certain movies where that works, but yeah. to be fair, that movie wasn't. The whole joke was the fact that they were in drag, right? And like. Wild Wild West was that movie. Like, yeah. isn't it funny? I'm wearing a dress. And it's right, like, I right. mean, it's That's not true. really yeah. that funny. Yeah, to Wong you know? <laughs> Fu definitely respected the exactly. art form a little more than, yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that movie was very, like, you know, isn't it funny that, that I have I'm a man boobs, and I've like, got sand fake boobs. boobs and yeah, isn't that hilarious? Tell me if this is true or not for you as it was for me, because now I'm finding out we grew up very similarly. Yeah. So gratuitous sexual stuff mm-hmm. was off in movies like you of could, course they made you close your eyes or turn your back around or whatever but people getting shot at never an issue absolutely fine. this is the thing that always like boggled my mind and it still bothers me and i think at, around this time was when i was just like you know what this isn't really starting to make sense what it was the point when the passion of the christ came out i want to say the matrix reloaded had just come out as well yeah and if you went to a cool church, the pastors were like, <laughs> were like, you got to watch The Matrix because it's basically a metaphor for salvation, right? So, <laughs> so like, I wanted to see The Matrix Reloaded, but a lot of people then went against it because I want to say the directors and the writers of the movie, they found out, like, all these things going that were going on, so they kind of leaned away from that because mm-hmm. that wasn't really the story they were trying to tell, which is totally fine. That's not the story you're trying to tell. Right. I get it's it. Movie, you know, yeah. It's your movie. Do whatever you want. So they were very against it, but then they were very for the passion of the Christ. And I went and I saw it. And of course, you know, I, I saw it and I felt guilty just like anyone that ever saw it. But after a while I was like, I'm watching a movie that is just blood and gore and just like i mean this guy is getting like re it, it, i know he's not getting crucified but it is really realistic looking yeah, yeah and it's okay for me to watch this but not to watch something that's completely fake you know because right. if you are a christian you believe this actually happened right so you know what i mean like i don't yeah. believe the matrix happened you know right. what i mean like, that's not gonna like i'm gonna walk out of the matrix saying that was a cool story. Exactly. Right? But if you were, you're you're a believer um, in everything about the Passion of Christ, and you're watching it, and you're saying that happened. Yeah, that happened. That's affecting me. Right? Exactly. Whereas, like, the Matrix may not affect you at all. Yeah. But exactly. That, that was too much. Mm-hmm. But the Passion of the Christ totally. Yeah, I don't know. I never quite understood that. Going over to our next bit, 
Was there anything that your parents didn't let you eat, like snacks or anything like that? Um, Because I had that too. I don't really think there was anything that they were like, no, you shouldn't eat that or no, you can't eat that. I think it was more of like... No, it costs too much or, or sure. you know, one of those deals. That makes um, sense. Like, like it's too little for, it's too little an amount of food for the, for what it costs. Sure. Right. Because, you know, you license a cereal or you license a, a some sort of a food item and it costs more because it's got Steve Urkel on it or of whatever. Of course. Yeah. Right. So you couldn't uh, have Urkelos. <laughs> yeah. I did not have Urkelos. I'm actually okay with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but like we would get the, the off brand uh honeycombs sure you know or whatever like it didn't have the b on it it was like the wind uh what was it a pathmark brand yeah or whatever <laughs> what we had back then um yeah so uh so it was less about like no you can't have this because it's like got too much sugar or right or too much, it was it was more like i feel like that's a thing that people deal with more now no dude i dealt with that really? but I, and i think it was because of it was like partly because of religion partly because i was huh. a chubby kid but Fruit gushers were a no go. Really? Unless I went to freaking Bobby's house, huh. and then I had the whole box. <laughs> wow, that's you know, but like normally I would go to my friends' house and be like, "Oh, mom, they have this at like you know Omar's house or whatever." Yeah, yeah. And then they'd get me like the small box, right? You know, whatever they <laughs> right. could, whatever they could afford. Um, but it was yeah, there was never like any sort of um, problem with it. Not that I remember it. I'm, maybe I'm just misremembering things, but I don't think it was ever Man, like that. I can you know this actually just reminded me of something. They used to have fruit Mm roll-ups, and I used to watch all the commercials and things, and they had these, like, fruit roll-ups where they had, like, little stars and stuff, and you could take the stars off and, and, you know, put them on your face and scare your sister or whatever they were doing. And so I wanted them, and I remember my buddy Moses had them, and I was like, oh, man, these are really good, and I told my mom the same thing. So she got me these, like... I don't want to say they were organic because it because like I don't think that was a thing in the nineties yeah. yet. But it was definitely the healthy option. <laughs> right, right. It wasn't the fruit roll ups. It was yeah. like the, the the nature's choice or whatever. Yeah, fruit exactly. Roll up. Like it was the strawberry roll. You know, <laughs> like it was that. And yeah. so like I had it and I thought I was having a panic attack. Like I was like Oh my gosh, I saw my life flash before my eyes. Majority of it was Chippendale Rescue Rangers oh, episodes. No, yeah. Like <laughs> I like, wasted my life. It was awesome. It was awful. Like, mom, man. mom, mom, this is just a fruit. Yeah. Bro, I don't and where are the stars, yeah. mom? This is just a sheet. Yeah. It's a sheet of fruit. The ones that Moses have are green and blue. <laughs> This is this is like not a color. What is this? It still has the seeds. Exactly. There are seeds it still in has this. The seeds in it. And why is this wax paper off center? It's yeah. throwing me off, mom. It's so accurate, man. Yeah, that would happen to me all the time, dude. Do you remember any commercials for product placement? Oh my god! So you know, I used to love commercials like almost as much as I love cartoons. Sure, me too. I, there, I'll tell you one that I remember right off the bat. There was a, I guess it was right before the Christmas shopping season one year, Toys R Us released a VHS cassette Mm -hmm. that they would send to all the the people, I guess people who had signed up for a list or something like that. Basically, it was a catalog, but it was a, they they had prepared and packaged uh, an infomercial to advertise different toys that were coming out that year. That's cool. So it was essentially a string of commercials for different products all tied together in like and packaged as like a bunch of kids hanging out in like a really cool sure. futuristic set, right? Yeah. So it was like sometimes it was just like the kids playing with the toys and sometimes it would like straight up be like a commercial for fighter pilot. Right. Two or whatever the newest game for NES, and you'd see the plane flying. So it was like a bunch of video games, some board games. Uh, so that, but it was weird because I would watch that VHS right over and over, like it was like I was watching uh, Aladdin or Lion sure. King. Like I would just yeah. rewatch it over and over again, and all it was was a it was a long commercial. Right, right. That's all it was, and I would just watch it over and over again. So that was that that one stands out in my mind. But I, I loved commercials sure and the way they like package them towards kids and i i always wanted to do it's weird because i was a kid and i wanted to do like a scientific study and i wanted to like get a sheet and write down like okay um how many commercials for girls during this hour how many commercials were marketed towards boys how many were for like 
an action toy? How many were for action figures? How many were for food, right? Yeah. Like, how many of these were Happy Meal commercials? You were doing marketing for Yeah, a I was doing marketing strategy, and I was like eight or nine years old. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. But I, yeah, commercials have always stood out for me a lot. That's really funny. Yeah, I, Which, like, products would you say are, like, either your favorites or yeah. stick out in your craw the most? I, I love role-playing. Sure. Ones like... um. Like the, the, like the kind that you could like dress up and actually like physically do stuff with. Yeah. So like action figures were cool, whatever. Uh, you know, I like, had the Power you mean Rangers, like the Batman, cowls I had the Ninja Turtles, the, the right? Guns, yeah. The one that stood out to me, right? Or like the Batman like grappling hook, and sure. all it would be like it was, it looked like a gun, and you would press it, and like this hook thing would shoot out of it. Yeah. You know, there was one toy that I remember, and it was like a, a seven in one gun mm -hmm. right so it was like a handgun and then you add an accessory and now it's like a machine gun oh and then you gosh. add another accessory and now it's a rifle you add another accessory and now it's like a, a sniper rifle you had another accessory now it's a bazooka launcher right like yeah. it was like all these different weapons in one toy yeah based on the accessory that you put on it that's very similar to something that the power rangers did at one point because yeah. you can like get the Black Ranger's axe mm -hmm. and then, you know, the bow and all these things. And then it created this huge, giant right. yeah. laser cannon. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. You know? I had that too, yeah. Yeah. That was because so, they, they would, back then, um, yeah, they were money hungry. But course. they would at least sell you the whole set. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you would get, like, the box and it would have the Yellow Ranger's daggers and the bow and the axe. And then you could have each weapon individually. But if you put them all together, it made that one giant gun, you know. And then if you had that and the battle blaster that turned into a knife yeah to remember that you mean saba the sword no 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 no. they're they're the original power rangers they had a gun right so like they'd have a holster right you're and you right it. and they wouldn't and have a you dagger would like, yeah it. you would like extend it, it was like a switch it was like a switchblade yeah. thing yeah it was like a switchblade <laughs> thing that would pop out of the bottom and it would be a it was, sword it was so violent man it was it was My such gosh. a violent show <laughs> It's a very violent show. Oh, today, actually, uh, you know, I don't know when you're going to release this, but today that we're recording this is the 26th anniversary of the Power Rangers. Of course it is. That's yeah. awesome. Today's Power Rangers Day. Yeah. Something that is really great that I really respect about the Power Rangers is that it's still as bad as it was the day oh, it came yeah. out. <laughs> I, yeah. I was having that conversation just this morning. It is still as cheesy as the day it came out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely terrible. But I love every second of it. All oh, the, man, it's great. Every sparkly punch. Every, <laughs> every sparkly punch. <laughs> God, every color. Every color pointless coded. front flip. Yeah. Oh, my God. Every, yeah, every kick that went nowhere. Yep. Pratt Falls. You know, I had a, I had a friend in, uh, I wouldn't call him a friend. He was just in a he was, you know, schoolmate. Sure. Um, who would lie and say that he was on the cast of Power Rangers? He's that like, he played you a, know, we watched this, right? right? No, but he was on. He was. He, he would say he was a. He was a putty patrol. Oh, right? okay. Like he would play a putty patrol because they were you know covered head to toe and yeah. whatever. And he's like, uh, you know, he's like, yeah, we go over there and we shoot this and then we do that and you know all this stuff. And it's like, um, <laughs> I wasn't one of the putties that would fall. Like I was just one of those putties who would like dance around in the background <laughs> or whatever. And, uh, You're just and, like looking for his Z so you could punch right, it to make him and, disappear. Like, a bunch of us believed <laughs> him, and I'm like, you know, he was the tall kid in the class. You know, I had gone to school with somebody who had been in the movies before. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So I was like, I knew that was a thing that Same could here. happen. Yeah. Right. So, who did you go to school with? Just out of curiosity. Um, his name was Renee. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were on the same Little League baseball team together. That's awesome. And uh, I've tried looking for him on IMDb, but I can't find him. I'm, I'm assuming he's working under a different name now. Um. What movies had he done? He at was that time? Uh, at the time he had done a movie with Whoopi Goldberg, uh, and I think it was Boys Don't Cry or something like that. Girl, okay, something like, it was like one of those early on Whoopi Goldberg movies. So he had been on that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he had been on that, and then he um, he also had a walk on role in another movie. And I'm talking like this is by the time we were like nine maybe ten like sure. we were literally together you yeah know? yeah um and then I, I bumped into him again in high school and at this point he had gone through the growth spurt and gotten in shape and i was like hold on you were a chunky uh filipino kid in little league with me and i was and now you're like this like grown ripped uh, i guess he was still filipino but yeah <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't stop being filipino um like what the hell, man? You were yeah, supposed yeah. to stay chunky. Like what? Like we were chunky together, and now I'm chunky, and you're like ripped. And congratulations, good for you. Yeah. Um, but 
He's like, well, Marvel came calling. So yeah, I had no, to- I guess he, I'm telling you, I got to look him up and see if I can actually track him down and find him. But yeah, we were on the same little league team together. Uh, so I knew it was possible for kids to be in movies. Yeah, of course. Right? Same here. Uh, That's oh, actually... for the record, by the way, I'm I'm one sixteenth Filipino. Yeah, so I'm not. I just I was just describing him. I was not in any way disparaging <laughs> no the Filipino that. people, just in case. <laughs> no one thinks that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was gonna say that. That's actually how acting became tangible to me mm. when I was a kid right. was because in my sixth grade class, one of my classmates was in a Nickelodeon show called The Brothers Garcia. Ah. And then maybe two years later, when I was in like around eighth grade, there was a girl that was a grade above me whose mom was Victoria Jackson from Saturday Night Live. Wow. I had no clue. Honestly, at that point, I didn't know what Saturday Night Live was. Right. You know, when I, when I found out, I was like, oh, wow, this is all that with adults. <laughs> like, like and not the kind of, other way around. Yeah, right? not, not the, the other, other way, way around. around. Where it's way funnier and the jokes yeah. actually work and no one's <laughs> screaming over each other. Like that kind of thing. Do you remember any cereal commercials? Uh, the, I mean, the ones that stood out, the, the tricks are for kids ones. Sure. Were great. Because I was there when they went from the round tricks... To the shaped tricks. Holy right? cow. I, you know, it's funny that you say that. I remember when they were just circles. Really? Yeah. When they were just those like puff things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they I made them that, into Yeah. Shapes. And then I think now they reverted back to the circles. Did they really? I think okay. so. Yeah. I think they, they moved away from the shapes. in forever. I'm assuming they were just too expensive to keep up with. I'm assuming. Yeah. Like, you know, all those banana cutters, you know, to, do they still make, make the shapes. Do they still make Trix yogurt? That was a thing for oh, a while. Oh, I think they do actually. That was a thing for a while. Yeah. Trix they yogurt. They were like, oh, it comes with two different flavors and you mix them. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just for kids so exactly. I, maybe that's why i just don't know yeah and that's <laughs> my question that i was going to ask you because a lot of people say tricks my question is how does the rabbit know that the tricks are good because it seems like he's never had them well i think that's the that's the point of it like he wants to have them <laughs> right but he's never had them but isn't he the one that's always describing the shapes and how good they are oh i guess that's true yeah <laughs> I mean, I talked to a really great comedian, Luis Diaz, about this, where he, we talked about the Cinnamon Toast Crunch oh, commercials. Luis Diaz. Yeah, he's yeah. great. We talked about the Cinnamon Toast Crunch commercials, where they have uh, yeah. these scientists that are like, we can't see why these oh, things the are so swirls. good. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, and the kids are like, it's the taste you could see, you moron. Right. Like that kind of thing. And Apple Jacks commercials were always like, they were eating Apple Jacks. Yeah. And then the parents would always be like, I don't know why you eat these Apple Jacks. They don't taste anything like apples. Right. And their whole thing was, we eat what we like. Yeah. Right? So I think- Which I never understood. Because I was like, it not tasting like apple is a huge selling point for me. <laughs> like, thank you for telling me they don't taste like apples. Now yeah. I actually want to eat them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, you know, and, and it's something I told him where I really feel like children's television and children's commercials especially are really predicated on making adults look stupid. Oh, yeah. No, Dad. We eat what we like. Right. Like, it doesn't matter that like, they don't taste like apples. we know more than you do. Exactly. Right. So, <laughs> would you say, what was your actual favorite cereal, like, before, like, um, no commercials or anything? No commercials or anything. I, I want to say it was Cocoa Puffs. Like, I remember eating Cocoa Puffs for a yeah. very long time. It's good stuff. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Then they changed the flavor. Did they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At one point, they tried like a new form. It was like a new Coke kind of thing. Right, right. Where it was like sure. new, better tasting. And I think yeah. they just and it was added a, bad a different idea. cocoa. It was terrible. Um, but immediately after that, I was like, oh, this is awful. I left the entire box. Yeah. And then I switched over to, I think that was the point where I switched over to Tricks. Yeah, yeah. You know, I switched over to Tricks, started eating the the those. And then, I, you know, like you, you try different ones every now and again. Like you, you, you try the like. Licensed cereals like you try the tailspin, of you course. Try the, the I didn't get to eat the Urkelos. Um, My favorite actually was this cereal that they made uh, as a promotion for the Lion King, it was okay. called Mud and Bugs. And oh, yeah, and it had like little, this? like, uh, like, um, marshmallow, like little bugs. marshmallow bugs, and yeah, it was yeah. Cocoa Puffs, yeah, it was great. So I usually like to review a cereal with my guest, okay. and usually I also like to review cereal that has something to do with my guest in some way, shape, or form. Sure. So I spoke with my sponsors over at FYE, and now by sponsor, I mean that I like them, and I buy their products. 
And by spoke to, I mean I tweeted them repeatedly and they didn't get back to me. Gotcha. So what I ended up getting for you specifically, Dash Maverick. Oh, no. Is. He's got, folks, he's got a sack. There's yep. a sack. WWF. Oh, my God. You got the bootios. Oh, I have bootios. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that is amazing. I've never had bootios. Before. Oh, we're we're about to have some bootios. Oh, that's a, I'm actually worried that it's just going to be like a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actual cereal in there. I made sure. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah we're about to eat some bootios. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it doesn't taste like it says it does. No, no. So, <laughs> is it for those of you who don't know, bootios are the official cereal of the New Day, which are a t- a wrestling trio in WWE right now. Yeah. I cannot believe you found a box of booty. <laughs> Is there a reason why? <laughs> oh, man. The tagline says, they make sure you ain't booty. <laughs> That is, this is the best cereal we have ever reviewed. <laughs> like, this is amazing. A perfect way to start your new day. Because they're, they're new, new day. day. The yeah. new day is the name of the team. Yeah, yeah. that is amazing. So I'm going to pour some into my Reptar cereal bowl. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and mic it just for all the ASMR weirdos that like to loop it and make it their ringtone or whatever the weird thing it is that they do. It's very reminiscent of Lucky Charms. I'm trying to read these marshmallow <laughs> shapes here. They have smiles, <laughs> unicorn horns, a rainbow heart, tag titles, and then booty crowns. Is it like booty royalty or something? What I is that? Yes, I don't know where the crown came from. <laughs> so, dude, these are good. Dash, it would be super fun to just review this cereal, <laughs> right? Okay. But what would be way more fun is to review this cereal as a wrestler from the WWE. Oh, okay. So. All right. What I would like for you to do is to review this as either your favorite wrestler okay. or a wrestler of, that you have created yourself, because gotcha. I know that that's something that you do. So I'm gonna, I, 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 I think I'm gonna do this as a wrestler that I have dressed up as mm-hmm. before for Halloween a few times, and um, some people say I look as I look like. Okay. Um, I was actually once supposed to wrestle his brother. Okay. Uh, something happened that ended up not happening, but I'm going to do this as Randy Macho Man Savage. May he rest in peace. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. So I'm going to get some intro music and I'm going to make sure that it's popping. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, let's do that. Whenever you're ready. Here we go. There we go. Ooh, yeah. We're sitting here taking in this cereal. It's the New Day's Booty O's. Yeah, I'm going to pop some of these in my mouth. Here we go. Here's a here's a mouthful of no marshmallows. Mmm, <laughs> sugary goodness. Yeah. All right, let's see here. I'm going to take in some booty crowns <laughs> and a couple of smiles. Mmm, yeah, crunchy marshmallows. Ooh, yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's the first mouthful. That's cereal and marshmallows at the same time. <laughs> Here we go. Are you watching, Miss Elizabeth? Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's got the power. Yeah, these are nice. I can eat a spoonful of these right now. <laughs> Oh, man, that hurts your throat. <laughs> I know, man. That's awesome. Randy Macho Man yeah. Savage, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. Well, I didn't tell you before. I was never into the marshmallow cereals. Really? I was never into the Lucky Charms. I was never into those, like, weird ones that had, like, you know, the mud and bugs. Sure. But these are actually pretty good. Right. I'm just glad it doesn't taste like butt. No, it you does know? not taste. Not. I mean, not that I would know. Yeah. But I would. I can assume what butt tastes like. <laughs> I assume it doesn't taste good. Right. You know I, I, mean? I mean, you know, some people are into that. You know, I'm, I'm just pretty sure they wouldn't want it in their cereal, <laughs> is what right. I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, like I wouldn't you know? pour milk over a bowl of booty. Exactly. <laughs> you know? This is so, fantastic. That's this awesome, is, man. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I want to transition a little <laughs> bit into your wrestling career. Okay, yeah. Because this is so interesting to me. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So you fell in love at around 11 or 12 right. in the Attitude Era. Right. And then did you start immediately doing Backyard? Uh, no. So what, so what ended up happening was, um, so I started watching WWF back when that was a thing. Yeah. And Shawn Michaels was my favorite wrestler. 
at the time. He was great, he, yeah. Because he was everything I wanted to be but couldn't be. Sure. You know? Because I was, like, you know, introverted and I couldn't really talk to people. And like I said before, girls didn't like me and whatever. You couldn't and pull off those boots. Couldn't pull off those boots or the, or the chaps. <laughs> you know, I couldn't pull off the chaps. Uh, or had the long hair. Yeah. You know, Shawn Michaels had, like, the earrings and the glasses and the yeah, hair. Yeah, those aviator glasses, dude. Right, man. And yeah. women were crazy for him. Mm-hmm. And that music was... Oh! Sure. <laughs> yeah. right? Like he was everything I wanted to be and couldn't be. Yeah. So I, I started watching that, and then Sean ended up uh, leaving and retiring. Um, and so now there was not really a reason for me to watch WWE anymore, uh, but WWF. So eventually, uh, but that was also right when the NWO appeared, right in WCW. So I switched over to WCW, started watching that for a little bit, became a big NWO fan. Moved down here to Florida, and then I got to know some of the kids in the neighborhood, and I found out that they were also wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. And in the center park in the apartments where we used to live, there was a little area that was kind of fenced off into a square, and I found out that they would do wrestling matches. Yeah. Like little backyard wrestling matches. So I got into it, started doing the backyard thing, and did that pretty much all through high school. Never actually formally trained? Never just... formally trained. I just did backyard wrestling all Uh-oh. through high school. <laughs> It was mad dangerous. Yeah, I'm sure. oh, it was crazy dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I was very good. I've always been very good at like watching somebody else do a thing and then doing it right. Like yeah, sure. I'm very good at that. <laughs> like without being formally trained, I- I'll get into that when we talk about my improv. Yeah. But uh, eventually, you know, I did that or whatever. And then after high school, college came in the way and sort of dropped off. I met a buddy of mine. Uh, his name is George. Uh, I met him outside of uh, WWE Armageddon when they came down to the BB&T Center. Yeah, yeah. And we got to talking or whatever, and I was dressed as Hurricane Helms because uh, cosplay has always been a thing for me. That's awesome. And I looked just like him at the time. So I'm dressed up like Hurricane Helms, and he asked me, he goes, oh, did you make this gear or whatever? Did you ever wrestle? And I said, yeah. He says, well, I've got my own uh, wrestling company, which was at the time still considered Backyard. So I was like, all right, cool. I haven't done backyard wrestling in a while. So I'm going to do it with this guy. Um, but he was he was at the point, uh, uh, like, remember The Godfather when they were trying to take the family legitimate? Yeah. So he was at the point where, yeah, it was still considered backyard wrestling, but he was going to try to take it legitimate, right? right? So we got a ring, and we, uh, we talked to trainers from Miami to come down and give us a few pointers and start training some of the boys. And uh, so we, it was kind of like learn on the job kind of a deal. Yeah. So I started wrestling for George at uh, ICW, uh, Independent Championship Wrestling. And as I was wrestling for him, I was also learning how to be a professional wrestler. But I was always good on the mic, and I was always good at talking in promos and yeah. being characters and stuff like that. So yeah. it, it As went you could tell pretty, by the serial as review. As you could tell by the serial <laughs> review, yeah. So, you know, we it was uh, it was just kind of like a, it was perfect for me, you know, because it was it was physical. It was, uh, you know, I got to wear costumes and I got to play these characters and um, be on a microphone in front of what people. What were the characters that you got to play? So I've gone through a variety of different characters throughout the years. So the two, two main ones. So Dash Maverick is my main one. That's the yeah. one that I started with. Um, and then I eventually transitioned once we got to like be on TV and stuff. So fun fact, my parents didn't know that I wrestled for many years. Okay. There's something you were hiding from. Yeah. Your, sorry. From sorry. Your... <laughs> yeah. I was hiding from my parents that I was a wrestler. My dad always said you could watch it as long as you never do it. Yeah. So I would always hide from him that I was, uh, that I was wrestling. So for the first like three or four years of my wrestling career, uh, I was wrestling without them knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Once we started getting like, like news coverage, people would like the news would come out and cover like, oh, there's a wrestling show in Little Havana. I was like, well, we're going to appear on TV. They can't see, you know, this is going to be on Spanish news. All my yeah, family's watching exactly. this. They're going to recognize me. So I started wrestling under a mask uh, under the name Cuba Libre. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, very cool. Red, white, and blue. The whole nine yards. Very big in Little Havana. Sure. Right? I was a freaking hero. You were and their then, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, I was like the Hulk Hogan. I really was. Yeah. I would do the Hulk Hogan stuff, like the whole yeah. nine yards. It was of crazy. Course. You know, people would go crazy just when they hear my music. So I did that for a little bit. And then eventually uh, I transit. Once my parents, once I told my parents finally um, that I was uh, wrestling and, you know, they accepted it. Uh, I started working as Dash Maverick again uh, without the mask. And then eventually George, wanted, he was like, I need Cuba Libre back. Because <laughs> <laughs> as Dash Maverick, I was a good guy. I was a bad guy. I was whatever. But he was like, we need, we need, we need Cuba Libre back. 
So I started wrestling as Dash Cuba Libre Maverick. So now yeah. it's just sort of like a little bit of both. Was Dash Maverick just an intensified version of who you actually are? Or was it a character? Yeah, no, absolutely. It was it was definitely me turned up to 11, which I think is what everybody kind of wants. Sure. Uh, you know, their character to be. I've played good guys. I've played bad guys. I love playing bad guys. Of course. Like, I love being a heel so bad. Especially, like, when you're good on the mic, and my trainer used to say this all the time. He's like, if you can cut a promo, you should be a bad guy. There's yeah. no reason well, the why Rock you would was be a good the guy. best at it. Right. The Rock was the best. And he was a yeah. bad guy forever until yeah. the people were just like, we actually just really like hearing him cut promos. So. Yeah. And then people were like, we just like him in general. Right. <laughs> so yeah. then he started making movies. Yeah. Yeah. You know? you know, I've always said the difference between a good heel and a good baby face is just who you are directing that to. Yeah. Right? Like, if you take a guy and he's like, all right, this guy's a badass. Right. He's a bad guy and I hate him. And, but he's, you know, I get it. He's a badass. Right. And if he's doing that towards your favorite wrestlers, he's a bad guy. Yeah. But as soon as he like is still a badass, but against the guys you don't like, now the crowd is with you. Like, yeah, no, beat that other guy up. And now they're still with you. But it's the ones that like are a badass. And then when they go to turn good guys, they're like, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Let's let's cheer and let's be cool. And this town is awesome. And that's when the crowd's like, oh, yeah, kind of suck. Exactly. Like, which is the it's the John Cena scenario, right? Like, you know, John Cena's out there saying, like, loyal, honesty, respect. It's like, no, that's not. That's fake. That's not you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So when did you get into the cosplay wrestling? Oh, the cosplay wrestling. Okay. So the cosplay wrestling originated at, uh, at Florida Supercon. Okay. And interestingly enough, I was at the very first Florida Supercon before I think it was even called. Florida Supercon, and they wanted to have like part convention, uh, and they wanted to have a wrestling show. I don't think they they knew what it, they wanted it to be yet, but they had a wrestling show. So a lot of the guys didn't show up, and we were there that day to help out, like set up the ring and all that stuff. Luckily, we all had our gear, so we stepped in and we wrestled just as ourselves. Right. Then eventually, Supercon moved to the Miami, um, not the Miami Beach Convention Center. I'm sorry, the they eventually moved to the Doubletree, the MACC, yeah, the, Double the Tree, Miami yeah. Airport Convention Center. Mm-hmm. So eventually they moved to the Miami Airport Convention Center. That's when I started going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they set up a ring in there, and it was still growing, right? It was still only one room at the convention center. Um, but now they had wrestling, and then they had a mix of, like, we're going to have some wrestlers in superhero costumes, and we're going to have, like, actual wrestlers like Sin Bodhi and Titan and stuff come wrestle, which, you know, mixed reviews or whatever. It wasn't, and, and I was in, involved in that as well. I was Batman at yeah. first, right? So the thing is, when that first started, the idea was there are local wrestlers. Let's put them in costumes. Let's have them wrestle, mm-hmm. right? But, like, you take a look at me. I'm not exactly Batman-shaped. Sure. Right? I weighed less than I do now. Yeah. Still not Batman-shaped. Yeah. Right? So that wasn't a good character for me to be playing. Yeah. I love Batman, and that's why they asked me to do Batman, and I had the costume. So... You know, why not? But I wasn't a good choice for Batman. So eventually what they figured out was let's not just hire wrestlers. Let's hire wrestlers who, A, are fans of the material and, B, look like the characters that they're going to be portraying. Yep. Right? You know, like we had a guy playing Punisher who was tall and super skinny and, like, all he did was wear a Punisher shirt to the ring. Like, that's not really yeah, Frank Castle Punisher, exactly. right? Yeah. So eventually eventually we got, like, Power Rangers that looked like Power Rangers. We got, you know, uh, Goku who looked and moved like Goku. A Spider-Man who could actually do flips and stuff. Yeah. Right? So I want to cut you off because I want to yeah. tell you that I want to say it was my first Supercon that I ever went to. This was before I was even a comic. Like, I was just going for fun. This was years ago. Yeah. And... I went with my best friend and his now wife, and we saw the pineapple shaped lamps in a bunch of different like improv groups. Yeah, and we were like, "Man, these guys are really freaking funny." Let's just watch shows because we went on a Sunday, so it was like okay. kind of the night where right, everything's everything wrapping kind of like up. Down, yeah. But what we didn't know was that Sunday is like the huge night, or was the huge night for wrestling. Yeah, and so we were like. We were hearing all this like screaming and like all this stuff coming from the main ballroom. And so we were like, well, let's just go in there and see what's going on. And we go in there and I see this dude dressed up as the Joker and and a dude that is dressed up as Bane and 
a whole bunch of great stuff happened where like basically the Bane was up there for the whole time because this was like after the Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a story arc where the guy playing Batman came up and Bane broke his back. Right. The crowd went nuts. Then Link from Zelda comes in. <laughs> yeah. Link comes in. Bane breaks Link's back and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know, whatever. The fairy, you know, the fairy from, from Zelda that's like, hey, over here. Navi, yeah. Bane grabs the fairy, rips the fairy's wings off. People yeah. are going nuts. Years later, I found out that Bane was you. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. And so, it's so crazy. You, you were a part of one of the best wrestling story arcs I have ever seen in my life. That was one of my favorite, too, honestly. I think I had more fun doing that story arc at Supercon than I did doing any of the story arcs. That, man, uh, that story arc was so fun, man. Yeah. I mean, it was like wall to wall energy. That crowd was, you had that crowd in your hands. Oh, dude. yeah. And I wish I wish you could have been there the whole weekend because we did this we did a whole thing like me Link Navi like I kidnapped Navi at one point we posted a bunch of pictures online of her like putting on my boots and that like, is she's so like, I, good yeah um, you, <laughs> you know, told me something else where where after that match there was another match where you brought her back and she had bandages on yeah her back? yeah so the, so because it happened over four nights right so she had she had full grown wings on the first night I ripped them out right. The next night she comes out and she's got two little X bandages where her wings would be yeah. from when I ripped them out. The third night she comes out and she's got a small pair of wings yeah. in her costume. So, like, the wings are growing back. By the fourth night, now the wings have grown back completely. You know, and I think um, I think it was like I tried to I tried to rip them off and Link cut me off. I, I think the last night is the one where Link finally gets his. Uh, yeah, I, his we ended up we ended up watching a bunch of other wrestling fights yeah. because that was the fight that made us go insane <laughs> for this. We were like, we have to keep watching this. This is so good. And yeah, Link ends up beating Bane. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the crowd goes nuts. But it was then, amazing you know, the way we did it too. Oh yeah. yeah, it was great. What drew me in was I was like, at first it was funny because I was like, is that everyone from GI Joe fighting all five of the Power Rangers? This <laughs> is was. awesome. It this was. is. It was literally like God playing with action figures. That's what it looked like. <laughs> That's, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. That's what it was. It was like, here's all the stories we want to see as kids. Yeah. It was playing with action figures. It was literally that. And your storyline was the best storyline of that night. And it sucks because I, uh, you know, I I was lucky enough this year that I was asked by Supercon to do stand-up. And I went and I did stand-up all four nights. And it always got in the middle of me watching you because right. I always I wanted to come down and watch you. And the same. I wanted to come up and watch your comedy set and I yeah. couldn't watch it because <laughs> I had yeah. to be downstairs for the wrestling. And for wrestling this year, you were Mario this year. I was Mario this what year. What was the storyline? Explain it. Uh, so the storyline this year for Mario, and I've, I've played a couple of different characters for Supercon, and I think I found the sweet point in uh, in the Mario character now. Yeah. Um, so the storyline for the, the Mario... The pictures that I saw were great. Yeah, like, yeah. You looked no, awesome. And my brother is a photographer, too. So yeah, his yeah. pictures are, are fantastic. He's the best wrestling photographer in all of South Florida. He's actually on a plane right now to head up to the AEW show that's happening. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, the, the, their next uh, pay-per-view. So the storyline with Mario was... Uh, it was Mario and Luigi, and we were tag-teaming all weekend. And the big storyline was that G- uh, uh, Cobra mm-hmm. from G.I. Joe had just come back. So Cobra came in, and they cleaned house, right? They They... They beat us or whatever. So we got beat the first two nights, and then Luigi and I uh, got the uh, got the payback on the third and fourth night. And on the last night, uh, Mario and uh, me and Luigi, we beat up uh, Cobra. It was uh, Baroness and Storm Shadow. No, Firefly. Oh, cool. Uh, Baroness and Firefly. That was the whole storyline. And um, that was pretty cool. And Baroness is very good. Firefly is a great worker, too. Um, they're all very good from up north. I think Baroness is from New York. Uh, cool, her name is yeah. like Kristen. Uh, I forgot her last name. Um, yeah, but she wrestles up in New York. Uh, I think Firefly wrestles like in North Carolina or something. I was just thinking about this. You know what would have been really funny? It would probably be impossible for you to do it. But what would be so funny is like whenever they like, let's say somebody comes up and then they just like slam you to the ring. Right. If like when you get slammed down, mm-hmm. there's just a smaller version of you. Like there's oh, another dude, actor. Look, let me tell you something. 
<laughs> Let me tell you something. I have been <laughs> racking my brain yeah. to try to figure out a way to do the the I small think to big so change. Cool. <laughs> Man, I've thought about setting up like CO two canisters. Yeah, and having like uh, my friend's kid is uh you know he's smaller than me but he's a, a, a you know he's a big he's a husky boy as well yeah yeah and uh my friend was like you should have him dress up as mario as the little mario mm -hmm. and then he comes out and somebody throws him a mushroom and then it grows into you and then at some point they slam you you roll under the ring it would at least be a cool intro it would it would like if it's little mario coming out and then the mushroom gets thrown and then i've tried i've tried thinking of so many different ways to do that uh, Man, that would be so freaking funny. <laughs> the one cool thing I, I do get to do is Mario, and I'm probably breaking a lot of rules by saying this. So uh, there's four nights of wrestling, and I always tell my uh, I always tell my brother I'm like, uh, what's the over and under, and how many bumps do you think I'm going to take this weekend? Right. Uh, <laughs> this weekend it was three. I took three bumps in four days, which is fantastic, and that's one of the reasons I love the Supercon shows because it's more storyline driven. Than like real big physicalities. Yeah, yeah. Because you're wrestling for four days. You don't want to get hurt by doing way too much. Um, and the crowd loves it anyway. It's like a, it's like a stunt show. Exactly. So um, at one point, I had a bunch of coins, like Mario coins that I picked up at Party City. <laughs> had them crazy. hidden in my pocket. And right before I know when I'm taking my big bump, I you know I hold them or whatever. I go, I set up. The, the person hits me. I take the big bump. But when I take it, I toss the coins yeah. up in the air and out to the audience. That's great. And they go nuts. Of course. They go crazy just because that they weren't expecting it. And suddenly there's coins flying everywhere. Everybody gets to take a souvenir home. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's great. So. <laughs> I feel like if you're going to play Mario or Sonic, you have right. to have coins in your pocket. Yeah, you have to have coins or rings or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so great. What's like one of the most dangerous things that has happened to you over the course of Ooh. like a good story where it's just like, okay. man, I almost freaking died there. <laughs> like something yeah. like that, you know, uh, which I'm sure there's a I've lot. a couple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so two of them happened at, at Supercon. So, by the way, you just said it was, that's why you love it. Cause it's so safe there. But <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I almost died twice. Well, was, at Supercon. Yeah, Cause it was, it was, you know, <laughs> I've learned how to be safe. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I was one time I was playing Bane. And this uh, this one guy who shouldn't have been there get, got a little overzealous, and um, he starts like actually beating on people mm. at one point. And it's like, dude, calm down. We're all just here to have fun, right? Right, right, right. So he picks up a garbage can and uh, a garbage can lid, and he starts whacking people with it. Now you think you're you're watching it on TV, and you're like, oh, it's a garbage can lid. It's made out of aluminum. It's not going to hurt. Let me tell you something. Yeah, garbage can lids are actually really heavy. And thick gauge aluminum, and they, they hurt. Yeah, I've actually asked you this question. I was like, oh, all the tables and stuff, they're breakaway. And you were like, no, they're not. No, they're not breakaway. They're those actual are real chairs, real those tables. Those are actual chairs. Those are actual tables and ladders because it, it would cost more money to right. make breakaway stuff. Right. So we'd just rather use the you crappy just use chairs. use the real chairs. Yeah, it's, and I'll, I'll let you in on that secret when I'm done here, but they're real. They're real. And so it's a real garbage can lid. And so he's whacking away at people. And he's, he turns towards me, and I'm like, number one, I'm Bane. Number two, I'm d I don't like bullies. Right. So he comes up to me to hit me with the garbage can lid, and I punched it right back into his face. Right. Uh, and that stopped him. But I also, uh, you know, it, this sucks for podcasting, but uh, I broke my pinky, and it's never really settled oh, gosh, uh, correctly. Yeah. So, like, you can see it. It's all, like, crooked and stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So that was one. Another one was I, I underestimated, like, how far a guy was going to jump through the ropes. Um, and I went to catch him and ended up popping my shoulder at a place Oh boy! in the middle of the match. And uh, th there was still a bunch of spots that had to happen. That's the other thing, too, is like I feel like there's a lot of like math that happens when yeah. you're doing wrestling. And you get one equation wrong, dude. Right. And not only your life, but another person's life could be in danger. Yeah. You know, so it's... It's kind of crazy, man. <laughs> you know, th oh, yeah. that's why it becomes something where I just started respecting these guys because it's just like you're putting your life and your body on the line yeah. for entertainment, dude. And it's funny, though, because I think back to like the moments where I was probably most hurt and none of them happened during crazy moments. Sure. Right? Like I've gone through tables. I've put people through tables. Yeah. I've done elbow drops off the top of a ladder. I've jumped off the stage onto somebody several feet below me, right? Like, so I've done all, I've come off the top turnbuckle onto a group of people. Like, I've done all this crazy stuff and I've, I've done them to people and I've always done them to them safely yeah. and I've always taken my bumps safely, right? 
So none of that crazy stuff has been an issue. But the one time I got really scared was I got knocked out during a match one time. And it was uh, it was during a move called an insiguri, which for those of you who don't know, it's like somebody goes to kick you, but you grab their leg, and then they kind of jump up with their other leg and kick you in the head. Yeah. Right? They're not actually supposed to kick you in the head. It's, you know, it's it's you get hit. Right, but it's supposed to be like a like a hey kind of tap, right? Not right. a let me knock you out tap. Mm-hmm. So the guy, I guess he undercalculated or something, and when he jumped up to kick, you know, it was middle of the match, he jumps up, he actually kicks me in the head, and the next thing I know, the referees, I I, I wake up and the referees counting four, five because I've been down on the floor for four or five seconds. Oh my gosh! And I I just completely blanked out. I just remember like. Okay, here comes the kick and the referee's counting. Like, where did all that time go? Whoa. Right? But I knew that there was another spot that I had to get ready for because after he kicked me in the head, he tags his partner. His partner was going to come off the top rope and I was going to catch him. So I don't even know where I'm standing, but I knew I had to do the spot. Yeah. So I got up, I fed, I grabbed the guy, I threw him down to the ground, and then I tagged my partner. And then I sat in the corner for a little bit just trying to get my bearings. But it's so scary to just black out like that. When that happened, though, when you did your spot, was it basically just autopilot? Yeah, that's all it was. I, like, I knew what the spot had to be. Crazy. I knew what I had to do. I did it. I, I didn't even know where I was. I'm what sure, time yeah. What had happened. Like, nothing. I just knew, like, okay, here comes the kick and four, That's five. freaking it terrifying. Was terrifying. <laughs> it was horrifying. And I've worked with... I love hardcore wrestling. Yeah. You know, for a while, I was the uh, FOW hardcore champion, and it was a 24-7 title, so I had to defend it uh, at all times. And I was, I loved that. I loved being hardcore champion, and I loved doing hardcore matches, but I like doing smart hardcore, mm-hmm. right? I like telling a story with the hardcore. The hardcore I don't like is when somebody comes in and empties a garbage can full of stuff and just is like throwing things at you and stapling stuff to your head. Like yeah. that's just that's just gore porn. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like um, you know, power to the people who do it, and I I'm not taking anything away from them. Like you guys are doing your thing. I prefer smart hardcore where of you course. like show the table, mm-hmm. set up the table, so that when you put somebody through the table. There's a meaning behind it, you know? Mm-hmm. You have the chair, you set up the chair, you you know, th- like that. You know what I mean? Like you're telling yeah. a story with the item. That's the kind of hardcore I prefer. So that stuff has never been scary to me. You know, one of my gimmicks for a while was I used to walk around with a barbed wire baseball bat named Harmony. Holy cow. Right? And, <laughs> and you know, that never scared me because I knew how to take it, how to use it properly, you know? But getting kicked in the head, there's no way to prepare for that. You just yeah, get kicked in the not. head and you're knocked out. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So kind of shifting gears a little bit, how did you get into improv? Oh, so improv happened. Um, it was, uh, I was on a date with a, with a girl I was seeing and um, it, it actually ties into wrestling. So I'm going okay. to take, take it back just a little bit further. So in wrestling, we have fans who go to almost every show. Yeah. And they come to every show, and because it's not as formal as WWE or whatever, a lot of times, like, these fans will, like, stay after and hang out and, like, whatever. So we have fans who just kind of hang out with us, and eventually we all become friends, and we follow each other on Facebook, and they come to all of our shows and buy all of our merchandise, Mm -hmm. right? So one of these fans was debuting at an improv show. Nice. uh, With her improv troupe. So a bunch of us guys, we said to ourselves, well, she's always at our show. You know, let's go support her at her thing. So I went there on a date with this girl, and um, we saw my friend's uh, uh, improv show or whatever. And I remember watching it going, oh, my God, this is awesome. And I was always a fan of Whose Line Is It Anyway. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, you know, my buddy uh, and I, during high school, like, we used to record ourselves doing all sorts of, like, random things, like, and improv sketches that we would think of on the spot with a sure. camera and put them on a VHS, and we'd pass them around to all our friends so they could see how funny we were. <laughs> Right. So I was like watching this improv show and I'm like, oh my God, I can do this. This is like who's line. It's exactly like who's line. Mm -hmm. Turns out they were having auditions two weeks later. So never having any formal improv experience, never having done any sort of stage theater or anything outside of like drama class for a year. I decided to try out and I tried out. I got in and just like wrestling, I just learned on the job how to do improv and I would do workshops and you know, be directed by different people whenever I would get the chance and yeah. uh, learned how to do improv that way. Eventually, that improv troupe dissolved or transformed, uh, would be a better way to say it, into 
Society Circus Players, which mm-hmm. is the troupe that I'm in now and, and co-own with my partner, Alicia, or Allie, because she hates it when I call her Alicia. But yeah. everybody else calls her Even Alicia. Even though that's her name. That's yeah. her name, and everybody else calls her that, but I have to call her Allie. I hate it when people call me Michael. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, still my no, name, it. but I hate it. You know, <laughs> I, I get it. I said that earlier. I was like, uh, uh, this is Alicia, and she looks at me like, who's Alicia? And yeah. Like, it's Allie. It's Allie, everybody. So my partner, Allie, and I, we um, we run Society Circus Players, and that's a troupe we've been in now. We just celebrated our five-year anniversary. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I missed it, and I was really bummed. Dude, I you went... wouldn't have been able to. We sold out an hour before doors opened. Did you really? Yeah. That's awesome, though. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. That's yeah. amazing. I was able to go to one of your shows, though, yes. and it was so much fun. Right. You went to the Battle Prov one, right? Yeah. The, the, one, the between... one that you guys did where it was like Avengers Endgame themed, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like, the whole thing was was uh, two teams against each other or whatever, which if you've never seen improv or have never been a part of improv, it's not actually a battle. It's just marketing. <laughs> like we're just <laughs> we at, all like each other. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we're just trying to make you laugh. Like right. it doesn't really matter. Exactly. Like, we're no all, one's we're mad all at each other. Really cool with each other. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. one hates each other right. or anything. Um, which is great that I have my background in pro wrestling. Because <laughs> yeah, no, I know that's that's what's so great is like the the marketing was impeccable for that kind of yeah. stuff. So. You've been doing improv for a while and right. you have a couple of really funny stories, but like what are some what are some funny stories from the stage that you can remember? And I know it's tough because yeah. as an improviser myself, it's really tough to remember much of anything unless it's like the worst possible thing or right. the funniest thing you've ever said. You know? <laughs> there have been so many moments and I what I love is that because of my audiovisual background. Um, we record everything. Yeah. So I go back sometimes and I watch stuff and I'm just like, I forgot that this happened. This is yeah. amazing because I can't remember. We've done so many improv shows at this point. Sure. So many different games. So if you ask me to remember one from like the past, I don't think I can remember any one specific moment. But I will tell you there was one this past weekend at, mm-hmm. our, at our anniversary show. And uh, we were we were playing a brand new game that, that was inspired by our recent trip to Maine. Okay. So have you ever been to Maine? No, but I know it's beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've seen videos and stuff, yeah. and it just looks incredible. Yeah, yeah, when they send you, like, greeting cards from, like, like postcards from Maine, yeah. all those beautiful sceneries, like, mm-hmm. that's not, you didn't have to go to a special place to get yeah. that picture. That's that's just Maine. Yeah, that's hashtag no filter. <laughs> right. None at all. You, I, I, could, I woke up in the morning, stepped up to my bedroom window, and took a picture outside and that looked like a postcard. Yeah, yeah. So Maine is absolutely gorgeous. One of the things we noticed while we were in Maine was that no one does just one thing. Okay. Right? So every place you come across in Maine, especially when you're out of the downtown area, is like pizza and antiques. Yeah. Or, you know. Pizza and antiques. Right, right. And yeah, or, like, or like <laughs> horse feed and soaps. Right? Like <laughs> everywhere in Maine sells like a bunch of different things. Like yeah. honestly... When we were up there, we got pizza from a place that you go to, and it's like, it's got pizza and sandwiches and fried chicken, but it's also a gas station, and you can buy motor oil and has a section that's liquor store and yeah. also like a pharmacy, right? Yeah. Like, this is one location. <laughs> there are many places in Tennessee that are like this, which yeah. I lived in Tennessee for a year, and some of the best like Nashville hot chicken right. you can find at a gas station yeah, like that also crazy. sells motor oil yeah. and you know rotates your tires and, it's really weird and the pizza was fantastic <laughs> yeah the pizza was incredible and it was like it was and, and the aisle next to us was like motor oil yeah it really yeah. was so so we discovered that in Maine and as we were we we were taking a 4 hour drive from Maine to Boston from where we were in Maine to Boston and we were just sitting there and we we're like oh that would be a cool game right like you know, there's other improv games that already exist where somebody, like, comes into a store to return something, right? And they have to return, like, a celebrity, uh, um, a historical object, yeah. and, like, an a intangible concept, right? Yeah, it's funny that you say that because that game is actually the game they play and on uh, a lot of episodes of The Amanda Show. Do you okay. remember that? Yeah. It's a sketch called Block Bleaster. Ah, okay. And, but it's literally just that improv game. Right. Where they would come in and they'd go, oh, I, I asked for Zoolander. And he's like, you don't ask for Zoolander. You asked for Poolander. And then they would act out right. the, the fake movie okay. or whatever. And like, it's the same sketch. Right. Like, same it's the same idea. Yeah. kind of idea, which is really, it's really interesting that yeah. a lot of improv 
games are how a lot of sketches are right. well, like that's the bare bones started, of sketches. Right. That's how improv started. Was, yeah. Here's an idea. Let's do some improv and then we'll come out with a sketch. That's what Second City works. Exactly. In yeah. Chicago. Right. So there's already a lot of improv games that kind of exist like that where there's some sort of store and either somebody is returning or somebody is, um, hey, this thing is broken. This is the problem with it, right? There's different improv games that are like that. So we were like, what if we did a main, one of these main variety stores where we sell lobster rolls. So every time we play this game, the store sells at least lobster rolls. Right. So it's Bob's, and Bob's the name of the guy whose house we stayed in while we were up there. Right. Uh, great guy. His wife is fantastic. She's part of our group. But we stayed up there. And um, we were like, so it's Bob's, mainly lobster rolls, and then three other items, mm -hmm. right? So that's how the game starts is I go outside. And it's how these suggestions. Right, they get the three suggestions, and then I come in, I have to guess the three things that mm -hmm. I sell. Yeah. And then at the very end, somebody calls. I say, you know, welcome to Bob's, mainly lobster rolls, whatever. Yeah. Um, so cool. So we're playing that game. And um, at, so I'm, la I'm, uh, I'm uh, allergic to shellfish. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, and I was in Maine where everything is lobster. Is, yeah, exactly. So I kept hearing about lobster rolls and everywhere you would look, they'd sell lobster rolls. And it was like, oh, hey, we're selling, you know, it's like burgers and pizza and lobster rolls. Right. So I've never had a lobster roll mm -hmm. because I can't have them. Right. <laughs> so like a little ignorant me, uh, I thought that a lobster roll was kind of like a California roll. Sure. Right. Or a sushi roll. Right. right. So I'm in the middle of this game, and because everybody's coming in and they're ordering lobster rolls, I'm preparing the lobster rolls while I'm trying to figure out what the other item is. So my partner, Alicia, comes in, Allie, and uh, she's she asked me for the lobster rolls, and at one point she comes next to me, and she's like, can you teach me how to make the lobster rolls? So I say, all right. <laughs> so, so you take a handful of rice, you lay it down, and she goes, rice? There's rice in this lobster roll? And I was like, yeah, that's how you start off a lobster roll. And she goes... Do you think a lobster roll is a sushi roll? And <laughs> man, <laughs> she died. I died. The whole audience was cracking up. We had to stop for a second because everybody that's broke. That's really freaking funny. And I'm sitting. <laughs> Allie, I'm si but that's the thing too is I can imagine Allie doing that because that's so who she is. It, she really and, is. Yeah. And if I was on stage and that happened to me, I would die laughing. Oh yeah. That yeah. is, she's so funny. She is. I love playing with her. I love her yeah. as a person and, and uh, we play together so well. We've got an improv duo. Yeah. Uh, we're performing in Palm Beach uh, um, in September as our duo punctuation marks. Um, and uh, and uh, we, we we love playing with each other because we mess with each other like that. On yeah, stage. yeah. You I know? love and that. It's like little things like that. And the audience loves watching stuff oh, of like course. that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They you love know? when she messes with me and they love when I mess with her. Yeah, because they're like, oh, they're actually friends. That's fun. Right. You yeah. know, like that kind yeah. of thing. There's one story that you told me that killed me. I thought it was so funny. It was the story. I'll give you a couple of context clues and yeah. then you can tell it. It was the story about the improv show that you did the day after The Force Awakens came out. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. See, Please that's one of those things story. that you just you put it in the back of your mind. And it you is don't so it. funny. Uh, so, uh, spoiler alert right now. If you haven't seen The Force Awakens... <laughs> There is a spoiler for that in this story. So uh, we're playing a game called Pick a Line. And as I tell the story, you're going to imagine what's going to happen. We're playing a game called Pick a Line where the audience before the show will write things on little slips of paper. Yeah. Uh, and they could be like a line from a movie or something you heard on the radio or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then we will act out scenes on stage later on in the show. And occasionally we'll reach into the slips of paper and read the line as if it were part of our scene. So you could say stuff like, I'm going to the store to pick up, you know, chicken and motor oil and then read the strip of paper and have it say like, say hello to my little friend. And now you have to justify that. Right. So we're playing that game. And I wasn't actually in the show. I was just there watching and supporting. I think I was maybe even in the tech booth. And we're watching the show. It's the day after The Force Awakens comes out. And, uh, you know, it, it, it had to have been a Saturday night. So The Force Awakens has now been out Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday night, people are in the theater. And one of the slips the of paper. Theater. The improv theater. Yeah. Um, one of the slips of paper that gets pulled said, Kylo Ren kills Han Solo. <laughs> right. Just in the middle of a scene. 
and you don't even realize it until you're halfway through the reading of it. You just pick it up and you read it, and he yeah. goes, you know, the guy is saying something like, uh, "I just really wanted to like, tell I you." I can't that. go. I can't go back to work because Kylo Ren kills Han Solo. <laughs> and as soon as he read it, he realized what he read, and you could see the oh no well, on his and, face. And the, the freaking audience would like. Oh, gasped, the audience right? turned. Like, yeah, the they, audience like, lost it. The audience lost it. There was a, there was a gasp that sucked the air out of the room. Then the <laughs> boo happened of course crazy. yeah everybody went boo <laughs> a couple of people went oh no luckily i had already seen the movie saturday morning but it was yeah we, we lost the entire audience they, that's they, hilarious to we, me it took us <laughs> it took us like another 20 minutes to get them back on our side of course yeah and it was unfortunate because so like we always have somebody who's not playing the game yeah right so usually it's like the person working box or whatever outside and they will go through the slips just to take out any sort of like bad words, if there's too many Trump references, yeah, you know, if there's uh, some like duplicates, two people write the same thing, right? He wasn't looking for that, so he was looking for bad words or any of this stuff. He wasn't looking for spoilers, yeah. And well, um, he probably didn't know. He anything. didn't know. He yeah. wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't like a Star Wars fanatic. Yeah, either. he was probably so, just like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. He was just like, all right, Kylo Ren kills Han Solo. Who cares? And then just put it in there, so it got through our screening system. <laughs> and when our guys went out on stage to read it, they read the line, and oh, we lost the whole audience. And I was like, and I thought to myself, if I hadn't watched that movie this morning, <laughs> I would have been so pissed. Yeah. You know? That's so funny, man. Oh my god, that was such a we lost the entire audience. It was I've never seen an audience turn on an improv show so quickly. Yeah, the same thing happened to me once. It, it's like I'm like kind of glad that it happened, but I'm kind of at the same time like I I hated it while it was happening. <laughs> I'm glad that it happened now. But it's that classic improv story of like, "Hey, can we get a suggestion?" dildo oh god yeah all right well we're this team and i was the person getting the suggestions right. so i was like you know what we're this team and this is dildo yeah and we did a 15 minute thing to no laughs <laughs> and i came out and at one point towards the end i looked out broke the fourth wall and said this is what you asked for <laughs> Oh, I hate that. You shouldn't have asked for it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You, you, look, you requested it. You know? Your, <laughs> you know? I, I, oh, man. I, so we've trained for that. Yeah. I've, I've specifically uh, worked with my troop on training for, like, when we get dildo, when we get, like, things, stripper. Have you ever worked with Jeff Quintana? Yes. Yes. He's one of the people that that's that's something he taught me as well. Right. Was how like, to, like, turn it on its head. How to and turn it, it on its else. head. Or also when someone comes in and they say something that doesn't make any sense. Mm, okay. Like, they just, like, literally their first line is like, hey, I have octopus tentacles for feet. You know, like, right. and you're just like, what? what? Like, yeah, like, what you do know, I do with okay, What, what in the world do I yeah. do? You know, and also, like, he was also one of the first people that says, if somebody says something weird like that, and that's the first thing they say, yeah. you do have every right to just be like, what? <laughs> you know, right. like just so they can explain it. Cause maybe they're going somewhere sure, with it. Sure. You know what I mean? Like and you never that would know be your honest reaction too, right? Like if anybody yeah. in real life just came up to you and said, I have octopus tentacles. It's free. You, <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's yeah. sure. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, how did you get those? Did you get them on sale? I don't know. Like, One of the things that I love about improv that's so fun is that you can literally be anything. Oh, yeah. You can be anything. You can be anyone. It doesn't matter. It's awesome. Obviously, people can see you doing improv. When are your next shows? So we're taking September off uh, yeah. because we're doing the Palm Beach Improv Festival. Um, so actually, you're sweet. In, when if is you're the in Palm, Palm Be Beach? When is um, the it is September fifth and sixth? Okay, I think Ali and I are performing on the Friday as our duo. Yeah, and then Society Circus Players are performing on the Saturday. Okay, okay, and then uh, we're we're pretty much off until like, August was very improv heavy because we did Maine and we did a couple of festivals all in one month, yeah. and our anniversary show. So it was a lot of stuff. So we're taking September off, uh, and we're uh, waiting until October. Um, we'll probably finalize a date in October sometime this week. But once we have that, we'll put it up on our website, societycircusplayers.com. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on our Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, so it'll be, it'll be up there once we have the date for October. But we're, we're looking to do uh, some cool stuff and, uh, and even, like, break out and do some sort of weirder stuff, too. Where we've been talking about doing that, too. That's awesome, man. Well, this has been an episode, Dash. Um, <laughs> Dash, where can people find you online? 
So uh, you can find me online. Uh, you can you can add me on Facebook at Dash Maverick. You can find me on Instagram, also at Dash Maverick, all one word. Uh, DashMaverick.com is a thing that exists. Uh, if you want to, <laughs> do you own the website? I do. I own the website <laughs> DashMaverick.com. Yeah. I do. I because Google.com also exists, but I don't own it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So da- yeah, DashMaverick.com exists, and it is my website. Okay. Um, yeah, it links you to. Uh, I think it's like a, a page of my artwork. Oh, awesome. um, and stuff like that. But from there, you, uh, you know, societycircusplayers.com or if you're feeling lazy, scpimprov.com. Mm-hmm. You can find me there. And like, you know, Society Circus Players also has Instagram and Facebook. You just search Society Circus Players um, and you'll find us there. Uh, that's for all the good, funny stuff. And we post videos and memes and all sorts of yeah. cool stuff. So you definitely. can, I'm all over social media. <laughs> you guys definitely have to follow it because, and if you're in the Florida area, definitely come see them live because they are very hilarious. Thank and you. Dash is great as a wrestler and an improviser. He's great, nice. just in general. For me, you can find me on Instagram at Mike Valdez. You can go to Twitter at I am Mike Valdez. You can go to whoismikevaldez.com to find out the answer to that question. And <laughs> that's basically it. This has been. A great episode. Dash, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, man. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe. Tell everyone so we can grow this family. Bye, besties. Bye.